Let's solve this question on Ojave curve. The table below shows the distribution of marks scored by 60 students in a test. So you have the marks given and the frequency. Part A, on the grid provided below, draw an Ojave curve for the data. For mark. Then the other questions, part B, from the curve above, estimate 1, the quartile deviation, 3 marks, 2, the 90th Percentile one mark, then part C. If the pass mark of the test was set at 45 marks, use the graph to estimate the number of students who passed the test. So those are the questions. So I'd like us to go to the first part. And in the first part, you're supposed to draw the OGIV curve. Now, how do you need to draw the OGIV curve? On the y-axis, we are supposed to plot the cumulative frequency. So we must um, create i'll create a cumulative frequency uh, for these uh, data here so these are we work out the cumulative frequency the first uh, frequency is two so that is two so two plus five you go adding like that uh, two plus five you get seven seven plus six you get 13 13 plus 10 you get 23 23 plus 10 uh, plus 14 you get 37 then that 7 plus 11, you get 48. 48 plus 9, you get 57. And then you have 57 plus 3, 60. So the total number of students, the last figure there should be, represent the total number of students, that is a 60. So that is what you're going to plot on the y-axis for these classes. Then for the x-axis, you're going to plot the midpoint, the upper, actually the upper limit. Not the midpoints, the upper limit of these uh, classes. So, like here we have uh, 11 to 20, the upper limit is 10.5. And then here we have uh, 30.5, here we have 40.5, and then here we have 50.5, then we have 60.5, this one is 70.5, this one is 80.5, and the last one should be. 90.5 so this one should come to represent the marks then the cumulative frequency so on the y-axis here we shall have the cumulative frequency which will represent um, the number of students the number of students number of students and then for the x-axis of course here we shall have the marks the marks so we need to plot these so decide on the scale to use so on the y-axis we have the highest value is 60 the lowest is uh, so I can use um, one centimeter represent 15 students. Uh, that one will be okay. Then for the x-axis, I can see the list is 10.5. As is 90.5. So I can use um, one centimeter to represent 10. 10 will be okay. So let me draw the axis. That is the x-axis. And then we have, so the y-axis is there. So for these, uh, I will use a 15. So 0 will be here. So we have, uh, so I'm, I'm, right, I'm, I'm starting it here, 0. So here we shall have 15. And then we have uh, 30. These will be 45. These will be 60. Just use a small one like that. This will be okay. And then um, for the x-axis, 10.5. Uh, so we'll start 10.5 from here so 10.5 there then these will be uh 20.5 then he'll have 30.5 40.5 five. this one will be 50.5 then this one will be 60.5 and then 80.5 so 10 20 10.5, 20.5, 30.5, uh, 40.5, 50.5. Or oh, this one should this one should be 70. So this one should be 70.5. So I'm giving a gap of 20 for every two centimeters. This are uh, 20. So 10.5, 30, 50. This one 70. So 90.5 will be here. So that is how you're supposed to do it. Now after um, having that, you should know what. Um, the value of the each small square that you have now you can break the scale here from 0 to 10.5 that is where the scale is not uniform you can break at, the, at that point and then you can start plotting so the first class 10.5 2 10.5 2 so you already know uh, the size of one small square so it will be is a one two three four five so one small square represent three so therefore two two will be here just in the middle of that 
So 10.5 will be here. One small square will present 3. Then 30.5. So 30.5 is here. 7. 30.5. Then 7. 7. This is a 3. 6. 7 will be here. Then 40.5. 13. 40.5. 13. So 40.5 is here. 40.5 is here. 40.5. 13. So this is a 3. 6. 9. 12, 13 is here. Is them. And then 50.5, 23. 50.5, 23. So this is uh, 18, 21, 23. 23 is here. I'm sorry, it is here. It's supposed to be here. It's supposed to be here. I can just uh, indicate there. Then 70.5, uh, 60.5, 37. 60.5 is here. Then 37, so this is 33, 36, 37 is here. Then 70.5, 48, 70.5, 48, so this is a 48 is here. This 45, then 48 is here. Then 80.5, 57, 80.5 is here. 57, 57 is here. 57 is here. Then the last one, 90.5, 60, 90.5, 60. 60 is here. So we've plotted all the points. Are there any point you want to look carefully? So we have plotted all the points. Uh, so we have the first one here, the second one here, the third one here, the other one is here. So now it is time to draw a smooth curve passing through all those points. So that is uh, how you're supposed to plot so and uh, draw a smooth curve. So that is the ogive curve that you get after joining all the points and uh, to avoid this point hanging here you can always uh, join it to the origin now that is all uh, you've plotted uh, all the points and you have drawn so that is all you have drawn the ogive curve now let's go to the questions uh, the first question is um, the quartile from the curve estimate the quartile deviation so how do you get the quartile deviation a quartile deviation is obtained by uh, getting so quartile deviation is obtained by q3 subtract q1 divided by 2 and what is uh, q3 you can start by getting q3 is the upper quartile so we get the position of the upper quartile so q3 we calculate by three quarters of the total frequency and the total frequency here is the total number of students which is supposed to be 60 to 60 so this will give us the position of the upper quartile which will be 45th 45th position so 45th student is the one that is going to give us the upper quartile 45th so you go direct to your curve why do we have the 45th student is here so just draw a straight line from the 45th student draw a straight line from the 45th student that up to the point where so draw a straight line from the 45th student up to point where it touches the curve touches the curve at this point so drop down drop down so drop down so it touches the curve at this point so drop down and read this this is the mark scored by the 45th student and this will give us the upper quartile so you know the size of one small square so this is a 60 point this is 50.5 this is 60.5 then the size of one small square you know uh we have 10 divided is 2 it's supposed to be 2 size of one small square is 2 because five small squares represent 10 so 10 divided by 5 2 so we have 60.5 so this will be 62.5 then this one will be 64.5 and this one will be 66.5 so 66.5 i repeat so this point here this represents 60.5 one small square represents two so 62.5 64.5 66.5 now let's get q1 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 is the lower quartile we get it by a quarter q1 is obtained by a quarter n multiplied by n so this will be a quarter times 60 which will give us the position is uh, 15th the 15th student will give us the lower quartile so we go direct to the curve so we draw a straight line to the point where it touches the curve that and then it touches the curve at this point so we drop down this point so this is the point here so from the 15th student, draw a straight line, 
up to the point where it touches the curve it touches the curve at this point so drop down so drop down and this will be this is a 40.5 so this will be 42.5 so 40.5 42.5 so this mark here is 42.5 so now having that we can now get the quarter deviation so quarter deviation therefore is given by we simply take um, Q3 which is 66.5 minus Q1 which is 42.5 and then we divide by 2 and this will give uh, this will give 24 divided by 2 and this will give 12 so 12 is the quartile deviation the other part is the 90th percentile so how do we get the 90th percentile percentile means a uh, percent so 90th percentile will be written as 90 divided by 100 multiplied by the total frequency which is 60. This one will give us the position of the 90th percentile, the position of the student in the 90th percentile. And this will give us the 54th, 54th student. So the 54th student is the one that is going to give us the 90th percentile. We want to get the mark scored by the 54th student, the 54th. So why is 54? So this is uh, 48, 51, 51 plus 3, 54. So 54, this is 48, 51, 54. 54 is here. So draw a straight line from the 54th student like that. So that is the 54th student is here, 48, 51, 54. Then the point where it touches the curve is the point where that line touches the curve. You drop down draw a straight line so this is the point of intersection of that line from this point 54 student direct where it touches the curve then drop down so read these uh, this is the mark scored by the 54 student so this is uh, 70.5 72.5 5, 74.5 this will be 76.5 that is the mark scored by the 54 student so 72.5 74 76 so that is how you're supposed to work out that then the last part and the last part is uh yeah but see if the pass mark of the test was said to be 45 marks use the graph to estimate the number of students who pass the test so if the pass mark was uh 45 marks so where is a 45 marks so you're reading the marks from the x-axis. This is why you have the mark. So why is 45? Uh, here we have 40.5. So 42.5, 44.5, 46. So 45 is somewhere here. The center. So let me draw a uh, straight line. So this is where we have the 45th. Let me draw this one properly. So this is where we have the 45th mark. Because this is 40.5 uh, is here. 42.5. 44.5 this is a 45 is here so draw a straight line up up to point where it touches that curve then from this point you join it to the y-axis like that so from 45th student you draw a straight line to where it touches the curve then straight to the left and uh, this will give you the last the person to get the first person to get the pass mark is uh this is uh 15 this is uh 18th this is the 18th student so the 18th student 18th student is the first one to get 45 marks so now to get the number of students who passed the test now we've got the the student who attained the 45 mark this is where the cutoff was eh? uh the 18th student was the one that obtained the pass mark so meaning all the students that are above from 18th student to the 16th student, they all pass the exam. The one who failed are the ones that are below. So you just need to count how many students are there from the 18th student to the 60th student. So you can see from 60 to 45, these are 15 students. And then from 45 to 30, those are 15. So those are 30. Then you remember the size of one small square is 3. So that is 33, 36, 39 then 42 then 42 students are the ones that are above the 18th student so you have to add the 18th student so those will be 43 students so you'll get a 60 uh, subtract uh, 18 that will give 42 then you must remember to add one because we have the 
18th student also attained the pass mark. So those students who passed the exam were 43 students. So that is how you're supposed to solve that part. Thank you.